Welcome back. We hope you caught part one of this video series. This is part two. Welcome back to our channel, everybody. I'm Julie. And I'm Mark. From RV Love. And we have been living, working, and traveling full time from our motorhome for how long? Five years. Five years. Today we're recapping on Those challenges things. and favorite moments and places. As many of you know, we are the authors of Living the RV Life, your ultimate guide to life on the road. And boy, have we been living the RV life. We have. We're going to share some more of that with you in this video today. So stay tuned. All right, so best travel highlights and memories. And the first one that comes to mind for me is our first experience of the Grand Canyon for yep. both of us. Mm -hmm. And it was at the South Rim and it had just had a humongous snowstorm in the area and we actually yep. had the opportunity to see the Grand Canyon with snow on it. Just came up after work on Tuesday afternoon. It's pretty cool. We got here, it was a little foggy and thought, <laughs> we'll just give it a few minutes, we'll see if it'll break. And uh, sure enough, it all broke loose and we had the clouds and we got some amazing views just before sunset. And then the snow came back and filled it up with fog. And here's the canyon behind us. <laughs> you can't see too much. <laughs> that was an amazing experience. Amazing. We also did a helicopter ride that same week. <laughs> it was a big was a splurge, splurge for us at the time, but in the end, we're still so glad we did that. Yeah, I remember that experience more than we remember the credit card bill. I would say the second memorable moment that springs to mind is actually here in Maine, Cadillac mm. Mountain, um, up in Bar Harbor in uh, Acadia National Park. And it is, I think, the first place that the sun hits the USA. It's a good portion of the year. And you have to get up super early to get from your campground and drive up there and get a park because it gets packed. There's so many cars up there. We sat out there and watched the sun come up over all of those little islands over Maine and it was amazing. truly magnificent. It was it was worth it. I mean it was like a 3 a.m. alarm bell, but it was and I'm not so a morning worth person. It. it was it was truly amazing. Yeah. And don't be in a rush to get out of there either. Just yeah, enjoy it's just... it, soak it in. You want to be there before, well before the sun actually comes up, because similar to sunsets. We see this all the time, by the way, in our travels, that people go to watch a sunset and the second the sun breaks the surface, they're, they're out of there. But some of the most magnificent color and is quite a while after mm -hmm. the sun actually sets. And so similarly, when you have a sunrise, some of the most beautiful stuff is before it actually crests. Mm -hmm. So I think for the third most memorable travel experience, it's got to be Zion. Yes. Because, and, and this was amazing, and I don't want to oversell it, but I tell you, we. We had been on this big national park tour. We'd gone yep. to Glacier and Yellowstone and the Tetons mm -hmm. and Bryce, mm -hmm. all just in the few weeks prior. And we're driving through That's the canyon, coming in from the east, and you get little hints of it through those little openings in the side of the tunnel. And you come out the other side of the tunnel, and maybe we hit it at the perfect time of the day, but we were both just, oh my gosh. This wow. Is, yeah. I didn't think it was possible after all of the beauty and amazement of the national parks we'd already seen uh, for that to be surpassed when we got to Zion because I'm like I, I'm kind of at my limit of taking in remember, beauty actually, and nature. Yeah. I don't know if I can stand anymore but then we got to Zion and it's like ah this is incredible and uh, we got to stay inside the national park. We actually did get a reservation for 12 days in the national park and that was amazing to wake up right there, uh, being able to jump on the shuttle to go and do the hikes. It was, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't wait to go back there again, actually. Me either. Yeah. Yeah, it's all. This is so hard, narrowing it down to five. It's but... so hard. <laughs> Our fourth one, I would say it was Alaska in mm -hmm. Glacier Bay. And Alaska was actually our 50th state visited and we didn't take the RV. We were up in Vancouver, Canada and got this last minute uh, cruise deal. It was 399 bucks for seven day cruise and it was leaving in three days. We are Alaska bound, we're on a seven day cruise. We're really excited, we're going to Alaska. It was such a beautiful way to celebrate our 50th state visited. And Glacier Bay, it's one that you can't really get to by driving to Alaska unless right. you make a separate trip there. Here in Glacier Bay, beautiful glaciers all around us. We're here now at the John Hopkins Glacier. We've been able to see it calve. Yeah, you hear this crack sound and then within a few seconds you just see 
a piece of the glacier fall away into the water. It yeah. is spectacular. Amazing. There's a couple hundred seals up there, but it's absolutely beautiful. The weather is phenomenal today. It's more frequently, it's raining and super cloudy and sometimes so foggy you can't even see it. But today we've actually got mostly blue sky. Unbelievable. We saw beautiful kayakers going right up to the uh, glaciers. That was pretty special. Being our 50th state visited, that was a huge milestone. We rented a car. For 200 bucks for the day from Skagway, just so we could drive to the Welcome to Alaska sign. We made get that photo <laughs> yeah that was <laughs> but it was also a great opportunity to be able to see inland more it you know, was but, but yeah. the main reason we did it was to get that photo that welcome to Alaska <laughs> for our 50th state and I have to say 200 bucks for a day for a car rental was considered pretty expensive but it's a bit like that helicopter ride it's just it was worth it number five Long Beach Washington yeah, and that wasn't even so much about the place as I think that particular day we had, it wasn't like it was, it was a thousand trails campground and it happened to be kind of backing onto the beach. It had a fantastic long bike trail out the back, which was super convenient, but it was just one of those days you finished work. It was a perfect blue sky day. It was 80 degrees. Uh, we had our dog Coda at the time. We put her in her little chariot on the back of our tandem bike, went for a long bike ride and it was just a perfect afternoon. It was beautiful sunset dinner on the beach and it was just... It was amazing and in the sunset was even one of those green flash sunsets you rarely see. The sun goes just below the surface of the ocean you momentarily get this big bold green flash of light right as it goes down and it's just it was just perfection. That was to me a perfect example of it doesn't have to be one of those places that everyone puts on their bucket list or is an Instagrammable kind of experience. It was just about being in the moment enjoying the place and the moment and everything about that afternoon for what it was. Mm -hmm. Unexpected moments, you know, mm -hmm. we weren't expecting that to be one of our most memorable days in five years of RVing, mm -hmm. and, and yet it was. Actually, I want to throw one more in. I want to throw a little bonus in on this, and it's not necessarily a location at all. It's that after living my whole life in Colorado, being able to go five years without winter is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool, yeah. When we go south, whether it's to the southwest or Texas or Florida where we just spent the winter, you just feel like you get more life out of your life instead of being cooped up in winter mm -hmm. um, and in the cold. It's, it's just really nice to be warm, actually. I do have to say that's pretty special. That's a nice little bonus. <laughs> One more. When we got that state sticker map and we stuck it on the side of our RV and then we would put the stickers of the states that we visited mm. on the side, that actually gave us some real purpose and fun to our travels and it gave us reasons to go to places that or take routes that we wouldn't have otherwise done and it, I don't know, it just made it more fun, especially in that first, at the first time we visited the 50 yeah. states, we're now in our second time around. Well, it makes you do some really silly things though. We had just come back from Australia and we had to go from Texas to Colorado, but instead of just going straight up, we went to Colorado via Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, yeah, Missouri, and Kansas. Just so we could put the rest of the stickers on the map. And of course it's always fun like finding ways to be able to put the stickers on the map. And everyone's got their own set of rules for that. We've got our own set of rules for that and that's fun too. And, and that's all we're going to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a different set of five. A different set of five. Biggest challenges. Oh, we're going to get juicy now. <laughs> <laughs> um, biggest challenges. You know, some of these are not even specifically related to RV life, but just life in general. Uh, but I'd say Which that, I think is an important point too, though, is that some of RV life, the challenges is life, right? True. And I would say the first one is actually before we even hit the road and we had decided to sell our town home in Colorado and we got a buyer the first day, even bought most of our furniture, which was great. But then I wasn't expecting this. For the next 30 days until close, we'd go on our daily walks. Um, I couldn't stop crying. Yeah. And I would just be crying every walk, feeling so sad about selling our town home. Mm. And I know that was really difficult for Mark because yeah, it's difficult to watch you be so upset and then feeling like I'm responsible, you know, that it was my decision, but she was on board. It was no. both of our decisions. That's what I had to keep reminding him. Stop taking on my emotions and feelings mm. here. I'm taking responsibility that I wasn't expecting to feel that way. And I think that's one of the things with the hard 
part of the emotional journey of RVing is you don't know, you can't predict emotions. You don't know how you're going to feel until you're in the moment and you might think you're going to be all excited and we w I was excited but at the same time there was some part of me that felt sadness about selling our townhome uh, because it was letting go of an old life before we set off onto our new life mm -hmm. and there was some grief I think as part of that so I think uh, allowing myself and you allowing me to honour that emotional process was really important mm -hmm. and healthy and then we went in for the close and I was still crying at the close <laughs> And then after that, I was fine. It was just it was just that period between selling and the close for like 30 days, and then after yeah. that, I was fine. So. And then we hit the road, and it was fine. Well, you know, there was still more emotional adjustment after we hit the road, but I think <laughs> was. that was the biggest, most memorable emotional reaction that I remember yeah. having was even before we hit the road. So. Okay, what was the next biggest challenge? Our first major mechanical breakdown oh, on yeah. the side of the highway, and, and that was in the Tiffin. That was in the Tiffin. We we're heading from Tucson to Sedona. And uh, driving along, and it was for, this is ironic. We had we're just like made a comment in. that we're, we're like, more than two this has in. been such a reliable coach, and then all of a sudden, a massive, terrible noise on the highway. I don't know what it was, but it sounded awful. It's just bang, 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 and it, it sounded, sounded like I'd run over a big metal box, and yep. it was just tumbling underneath us as we drove, and it was, it was so terrifying of a sound and so semis are going by and the coach leans every time one goes by and it's yeah. just it was really stressful uh -huh. and I think that when we've had some other breakdowns since then but the first one yeah. is going to be an emotional challenge. We had roadside assistance but I have to say there were not much help and so we pretty much mm -hmm. had to um, come up with our own solution. Well when your suspension breaks you don't have a lot of choices. But uh, at least we're reasonably safe, thank God, we're in a place that has a wide shoulder so we can pull over. One of the things we learned from that, I think, is it's really best to do your driving um, during business hours. So whether it's on weekdays or if you're driving on a Saturday before businesses mm -hmm. close, because that was one of our challenges as roadside assistants wouldn't uh, come and send us a tow because they didn't know where to take us because all of the dealerships were closed. So we got our own solution. We ended up getting to a dealership, got the problem fixed. And that actually ended up being the first of our three breakdowns in a month series, which is again, a whole mm -hmm. separate series. Put a link to that down below as well. As Mike said, we've had it happen a few times since, um, including with CC, but you know, with good uh, roadside assistance and with a good towing package, really important. And of course, you know, one of the big stresses is, oh my gosh, how big is this repair and what is it going to cost me? I think that yeah. financial impact. So if you have an extended warranty or if your RV is newer and you've got a warranty, that definitely helps offset a lot of that stress or at least just having like a fund for repairs. You know, I think the next one is not necessarily in order. In fact, I would say of all of the challenges we've experienced in five years on the road, this is by far the most difficult but it's a that's a life challenge but compounded by the fact that we were in our RV and not near home and not near our familiar places and that was yeah that's an element of the RV life that compounded it but the the losing our dog Coda because mm -hmm. um, Coda was we don't have kids Coda was our child and so she was a huge huge part of our life in fact a lot of our travel decisions were based around our life with Coda in fact she was even instrumental in why we chose RV Life to begin with is because we wanted to be able to bring her with us in our travels and uh, we were shocked and very saddened to lose her not only in the first year but in the first six months on the road and as Julie it's said five years. it's been five Almost. years still very emotional but compounded as Julie said by not being around a support group like your family makes you have that realization of importance of having a support group around but it's painful it's still painful yeah. okay challenge number four uh, it's definitely not easy living 24 7 in a small space like I don't know 300 mm. square feet or something for right. us um, with your significant other or your family if you're traveling with family we've done pretty well with it but I think it really the challenge for us deepened when Mark quit his job yeah oh yeah <laughs> and then we started working together as well and even though we both worked in the RV before we were separate separate focus separate spaces but right. then now we're both doing RV love full time we are working together on the same projects and we are 
we got the opposites tracked going on. <laughs> like, we, you know, it's a very big challenge then. It's still a challenge now. We're working we're through better. it. We're getting way better. But we're that's, so different. Our personalities and our styles are so different. They're very complementary skills and styles when they're working well, but when they're not, it's challenging. But we have some communication challenges. But, but what's been good about yeah. that is we've actually learned how to better communicate about things, and we've learned. I think we've learned a lot more mm. um, about each other and how to communicate and the other's needs more through this through the challenges yeah i'd know. agree with that yeah yeah like we, we so i think that's the same with everything in life you learn more through challenges than you do when everything's just pretty smooth sailing but that one continues to be a work in progress definitely two years later definitely a top five and we'll probably <laughs> 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 yeah it's love definitely you. top five love you love you, love you. <laughs> all right so what's our fifth challenge uh, I would say that is finding the balance between living the RV life and enjoying the lifestyle and sharing it uh, publicly. Oh, yeah. Like mm. here on YouTube, I've read our blog, on social media. We started RV Love five years ago when we hit the road and I started it was like a hobby. It was like a little creative outlet just for fun. Mm. I don't think I ever monetized that channel for over a year. We love to share and to help people. But it's also about keeping it in perspective of setting the personal boundaries around being able to just enjoy a moment or a place or an experience for what it is instead of thinking or worrying about how am I going to turn that into a post or a video right. and to just, to just be in the moment and to really, and that's a delicate balance because when we started out, like, you know, our values are still the same today as they were when we started. It's just always about let's just live a life that inspires us and share what is meaningful to us. And if you happen to be inspired by that too, that is great. And there's nothing we love more than hearing that what we've shared has inspired and helped people. But we don't measure our success or our joy or our happiness or our worth by our numbers, by how many subscribers we have, by how many followers we have on social media. Mm. Um, you know, as a, as a channel, I realize that's important but we're just really mindful of never letting that take over um, while we do this. And I think uh, you guys are really great about that too. And I think you, you know, especially those that have been with us for a long time and have gotten to know us over the years is that you really respect and appreciate that about us and our channel. Um, means we're not always putting out, you know, videos <laughs> as often. Uh, as we consistently, yeah. Right, and sometimes we have, um, you know, prioritized self care. Uh, over that because we never actually had a publishing schedule from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, we always wanted to make sure that there was inspiration behind what we were doing and not doing it because we had to or we had a schedule and it was more driven by inspiration. And uh, there's definitely a lot more content that we want to share. Uh, but then we also do a lot more behind the scenes too. That takes a lot of work to write a book. It takes a lot of work to build an online school like we did. It takes a lot of work to do the blog and, and all of that. And so, and just even travel planning and enjoying life and just time together and just having some, some downtime separate to RV love. So I guess the way to summarize is just, that's why we always keep coming back to our why, why we travel, mm -hmm. why we do this lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's wrap up with five personal highlights. Uh, from our journey as RV love. I think the first one for me is actually deciding to hit the road while we're still young, still out of health and time on our side and just, just taking the risk and getting out there and doing it. That has been a great thing for us. Get out there and explore it and we've had so many uh, wonderful enriching experiences by jumping into this lifestyle. And finding a way to be able to do it while we're still working uh, and not waiting until retirement. I mean, there's still a lot of years, you know, once you hit your retirement years, there's still a lot to see and do. But I mean, the sooner you can get out there and do it in a way that is sustainable for you personally, really glad that we started it when we did because I don't see us stopping anytime soon. No way. I say another one is actually creating RV love in the first place. This yes, we started that, you know, that first month we were out on the road, having friends around all of North America and even the world uh, following us and being part of our journey 
that is something that we didn't expect and it's been amazing. It's, it's, it's not always easy to put yourself out there publicly like this, but then so many of you that are so loving, so supportive, so encouraging, uh, you just make it worthwhile. And that's why we keep going and why we keep inspired to keep producing and creating um, is because of you. So thank you all so much for, for being that because you know without you, there would be no RV love. I think another major highlight for us is when I was actually able to I quit my job. Yes, that is big news. And, but you know, the first few weeks, or maybe even a month, I really had to just focus on getting my health back. I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail here on this video, but I wrote a much more detailed blog. It talks about my philosophy on work-life balance and also gives a little bit of the story on my health challenges and you know, how it might relate to you. So if you've got a little time and want the extra detail, go ahead and jump over there and check that out. Um, RV Love had grown to a point, you know, to where it was no longer manageable with me after work and with Julie working on full time, but it was so intrinsically rewarding knowing that we're helping people. and such a highlight to be able to quit my job, take the leap of faith, back ourselves, and um, jump into this full time. And that's been two years now. That's been two years. That was definitely a big leap of faith. That was mm -hmm. a big risk, yeah. but good job, honey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number four, and I think it's related to me quitting my job, is my first major project mm. was building the school, RV Success School. It was yep. the, I put him to hard work with that. Yeah, I jumped <laughs> right. straight into that. No rest for the, the wicked. Clock, but, um, <laughs> but it was super rewarding because we love being able to help people with yeah. the regular RV Love Channel, but taking building the school was taking things to a whole other level. Going much and deeper. That yep. was very rewarding, a very big highlight for us, and it was the first RV online school. Honey, is this better than your old job? This is better than my old job. Why? Tell me why you like it. It's this because I know I'm making a difference. Because I know that when someone buys our course, we're gonna really help them. It's gonna really have a positive impact on their life. And I that's so satisfying. It was. It's helped a lot of people and we've made a lot of great friends through that as well. We've developed some wonderful relationships and just knowing that what we created has really been so helpful. It's helped so many people out there. Yeah, That's just big. make it so much easier for them than it was for us. No, well, I wish it existed when we started. <laughs> I been do like, wish it saved us a lot of time. That's why we created it, right? <laughs> right. I think the last one for me is something that we're, we're still celebrating really is is the release of our book, Living the RV Life, Your Ultimate Guide to Life on the Road. I mean, when the publisher reached out to us last January, that's been a huge journey since then. Uh, huge, huge job getting it written, huge job uh, launching it in November. And here we are in, what, July, something like eight months later, and we're about to go into the third print run. So that the feedback to that has been phenomenal. Uh, they did a great job, it totally exceeded our expectations. You know, again, I think like the school, we're just so happy that book is so helpful to help anyone that's thinking about the RV life and thinking about, is it for me? How do I know? What do I do? Where do I start? And answering a lot of those questions that people have when they're thinking about hitting the road in an RV and just get them started on the right track. Great information. So anyway, we're going to put the links to all of this down below as well, but that that's, that's definitely been something that I'm incredibly proud of. I feel like these resources that we've been creating, feels like we're leaving a legacy. Yeah. And it's something that's really important to us is to, to be leaving something behind that's bigger and better than us that will help other people, you know, long after we're gone. And last but not least, our community. All of you guys here at RV Love, here on YouTube, at the blog, all of our social media channels. Thank you so much for being part of our journey. This has been an incredible ride the last five years. We wouldn't be here without you. We, you make it all worthwhile. So thank you so much for following. Thank you for watching. You guys are amazing. If you have any questions at all from this video or anything that you feel that we haven't covered, please put them down in the comments below. And until next time, we'll see, see you on, on the road. road. Oh, well, that was a lot, it was a lot in the video. I feel like we still just scratched the surface of all of the last five years. <laughs>